my grandfather called over my auntie Ethel, who's my father's sister, and he said to Ethel, I've got a task for you. Couldn't hear nobody pray. Couldn't hear nobody pray. Couldn't hear nobody pray. I want you to go out of the ghetto. Or well, that night was a curfew. I want you to go out to bring me a piece of bread. So my auntie Ethel, she survived Auschwitz. She, had a, she died in New York, Rich. She said, she looked at him and says, why do you want bread? She says, I insist, I want you to bring me a piece of bread. So she says, all the years you suffer in silence and the pain of hunger is the worst pain ever out. And you never complained. And all of a sudden you're sending me out into danger to bring a piece of bread. Why all of a sudden this change of... Uh, my... He was a very religious man. He says, I tell you, my Ethel, I feel that the neshama, my soul, is leaving spiritually, is leaving the physical part of my body. And before my soul departs, I want to give the body a little bit of pleasure, last minute pleasure. She said, go out and bring me a piece of bread. She said, uh, if you ask me to bring diamonds, gold is easier. Bread, you know, go out and bring me a piece of bread. So she was a young lady, she could speak Yiddish German. She made herself look very nice and she took a chance. And the Jewish religion is as honor your father and mother. If your father orders you something, you got to do it, and you get rewarded in this world uh, and upstairs. So she took her life into her own hands. She went out of the ghetto, and she ended up where the German soldiers lived in the barracks. And she started digging through the dustbins in case she found a bit of... Suddenly the door flew open, and a German soldier in his pyjamas stood there looking. And he shouted to her in German, Was machst du? What are you doing here? So she was a young girl, an honest person. She said to him in half Yiddish, half German, Look, I've got a father, he's very religious. And he insisted I go out a piece of bread. She said, in my religion, it says, honor your father and mother, and you'll have a long life. And, and if, and, and, and the German was just going to take his revolver and shoot her like you shoot a dog. And, and she said, if I don't do what my father says, then I lose the mitzvah of kabbat as a vichel as If I do do, I might lose my life. You're looking at this revolver. So for some reason she hit a very soft note to the German. So, some sort of pitiful note. And he went inside and he brought her a loaf of bread. And she made her way back to the ghetto and she helped up my grandfather. The one who wrote to me, she helped him up. <clears throat> um, my auntie Ethel told me this. This is not just you read in the book. She helped him up. He took the loaf of bread. He said, Baruch Hashem Nekum Amotzulechem in Aretz. Bebracha. And he, uh, he died. I don't know if he died immediately, a few minutes later, a few hours later. And uh, she survived Auschwitz, although she had a husband and children, which went to the gas chambers. But she herself somehow survived Auschwitz. And at the end of the war, she made her way to New York, married again, and had children. But she was never ever the same person. What really killed her was not Auschwitz. At the age of 70, she became a heavy smoker, 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 smoker. That's what killed her. Her name is Ethel, uh, Auntie Ethel.
through the Yad Vashem. And I recognize all the pictures because I was born in Berlin. I saw Hitler and the Nazi Germany. And suddenly I stopped in front of one picture. It's a photograph of a this size. This photograph showed like this. A Jew wearing tefillin and a talis and three German soldiers are standing behind them taking photographs to send to their families. Young Germans, you know, Nazis. So when I looked at this picture, I looked in this photograph, the eyes of this man and the eyes of this Jew, he, he didn't know whether he was going to die in a few minutes, in a few hours, or he's never going to die. But you could see in the eyes of the man, God has put him in such a situation. He's wearing tefillin and a talis, the Nazis taking pictures like you take a monkey in a zoo. So, so in these eyes, in these eyes, I read in these eyes, he had emuna, he had faith in God. And he, all right, you might kill the body, but God wants, wants there's, there's a reason to it. So I made up my mind, not through religious reasons, I made up my mind, I wasn't religious then, I made up my mind, in case a Jew dies, I will continue his work. So straight after this, I took the last money I had in my pocket, and I went to Meir Sharim for $300, if I remember. And I bought myself a pair of tefillin. The tefillin I had for my bar mitzvah, I couldn't be bothered with. I just chucked it away, I lost it. And I bought myself a pair of tefillin, not for myself, not become religious. The Germans can kill the Jew, but it's another Jew replacing him. And from that day on this, and I'm going to put in every morning tefillin. From that day on this, I put in every morning tefillin, and slowly, and slowly, slowly, maybe the holiness of them, I started drifting back on the Jew, Jews. And then I went back to the, to the drawing board. I started studying Torah.